Hey everybody and welcome to another Darkest Dungeon mod overview. My name is Element5 and today we're taking a look at Marvin Seo's brand new Wraith class. This is Marvin's sixth and newest modded class and it is a very interesting shadowy assassin which works around uh, bleeds, stuns, and sort of a brand new execute style mechanic which is kind of new for Marvin and something we don't see very often. It actually feels and plays very similarly to a Bounty Hunter. We're going to be making the comparison between this class and the Bounty Hunter throughout this video. Uh, and that is in part because the original intent of this class, according to Marvin, was to make this essentially a functional clone to the Bounty Hunter, the exact same way that the Musketeer is a functional clone to the Arbalist. However, Marvin felt like this class just deserved its own backstory, uh, mechanics, and to bring something different. Uh, nonetheless, you can download the Wraith Bounty Hunter gameplay mod for this if you would like this to just be a functional clone to the Bounty Hunter. But I have to say that I'm glad that Marvin decided to just go ahead and make this something slightly unique, because while it does feel similar, you know, it's its primary pieces here, the, the main synergies being stuns and bleeds, and especially this execute mechanic is pretty cool. Not to mention, this is also the first of Marvin's classes which benefits from low torchlight play. Two of its camping abilities are significant buffs if the torch is below 26. And this class also introduces a brand new district mod to the game, uh, which is known as the Memorial Grounds, benefiting both the Sisters and the Wraith with 15% bleed and blight skill chance, as well as minus 15% stress damage received. It's especially awesome for the sisters here, but that minus 15% stress damage, not bad also if you plan to take this character and really benefit from low torchlight. But before we start to really compare this thing to the bounty hunter and go over each of its abilities and how it works, let's talk about its backstory. Beginning with the Steam description. An assassin from a distant land the Wraith fights using a peculiar weapon of blade and chain. Master of this exotic tool of bloodshed, this heartless killer swings his sickle like a whip, lacerating and decapitating his foes from a range or delivering a brutal execution in melee. The Wraith is not an agile combatant. His body and mind are cold from a decade of remorseless slaughter, and he has adapted a patient and calculating method to his combat tactics. He relies on ensnaring his victims or temporarily incapacitating them with the blunt side of his weapon, after which he can deliver an efficient and fatal attack. And we get to feast our eyes on a really beautiful comic strip here, explaining the backstory of this class a little bit. As we see in the top left frame, a flashback to a bunch of students sparring in an open field. And this is immediately contrast to the present moment where we see the master and student standing apart from each other in the dark. We return to the flashback here in the second row as we see the budding relationship between student and master, and it's very clear that they become sort of intimate with each other, especially noted by this third frame in the second row as we see the portrait of the student sort of looking fondly towards the master. The picture suddenly then made much more clear as we're brought back to reality, the master standing in shock and disbelief as his beloved student has murdered the other students. And then to my favorite frame of this comic strip, which is just the excellent sort of action shot, a contrast between the sparring and budding relationship of both student and master, and then the actual fighting in present time. As the student rushes the master, the master then takes a swing, knocks the student's sword out, knocks him down, raises his sword above his head, about to deliver the killing blow, but then has a vulnerable moment thinking about the two of them embracing in a kiss. A tear streaming down the face of the master here as he thinks one more time about the relationship he has with this individual and the student then taking advantage of that vulnerable moment, leaping forward and stabbing his master and ostensibly his lover through the chest. Now there's an attached quote to this comic as well, which reads, he died that day. What remains is a hollow husk an unfeeling monster. So there's actually a really meaningful and sort of interesting lore and backstory to this character. It's clear that there was not only a budding and romantic relationship between the student and master here, but a really grim betrayal. And while we definitely see the student stabbing the master in the chest here, we know that that quote about him dying that day and him remaining as a hollow husk and unfeeling monster is sort of metaphorical. It's sort of figurative. 
And Marvin revealed to me that actually this killing blow down here was not so much a killing blow as he missed the master's heart. But this particular moment of betrayal was the catalyst sending the master into a dark and downward path to becoming the shadowy assassin, the wraith that he is today. And funny enough, when talking to Marvin about this, I actually got some really interesting sort of Star Wars vibes here. This felt a little bit to me like the Anakin Obi-Wan story where, you know, spoiler alert, Anakin becomes Darth Vader and uh, betrays his master Obi-Wan, eventually even striking him down. Although even in that case, it's not extremely clear if Obi-Wan is actually dead or not. And so <laughs> apologies to Marvin if that sort of devalues here or takes away or takes something away from this story and comic strip. But I really, really love Marvin's ability to tell a story graphically like this. And Marvin informed me that if you're using the Sisters class, you can loot curios and find rare journals, which help to explain more of the backstory of this class. Now, as we move into looking at the breakdown of this class and how its abilities work, as I said, we're going to be making some sort of on-the-fly comparisons to the Bounty Hunter here because they are very similar in certain respects. And that starts with looking at the base stats here. Max HP 27 for a Seeker is fairly high. Dodge 5, 3 speed, no accuracy, 5 crit, and 5 to 10 damage. So survivable, some dodge, fairly slow, uh, nice crit, and some decent damage. If we compare that to the Bounty Hunter here, and you just take a look as we bring this Bounty Hunter over. Max HP 25, 5 dodge, 0 prot, 5 speed, accuracy 0, crit 4, and the damage is the same. So these are fairly similar, but again, across the board here, the Wraith being just slightly more survivable, slower, slightly less accurate. The resistances of this class also really comparable to that of the Bounty Hunter. Just slight differences, of course. If we look at Eisenhorn here, we have Unyielding, which is giving us the 10% death blow resist up from the base uh, usual average 67. And then, of course, we also have Anemic, so dropping our bleed from 30 to 10. But again, just almost exact to the stats of a Bounty Hunter. Now, before we move into each ability here, let me just point one thing out about positioning with this class, which is that you can see that we can use Reap in position one or two by noted by the indicators here up at the top. But if I just mouse over the rest of these, Mark is in any position. This is in two or three, two or three, two or three, two or three, and then two or three. So for the most part, this class really is meant to be played in two or three. But I think because the first ability is a one and two, I would, I would try to stick this class in two. And that first ability is Reap. Usable in position one or two, only attacks position one or two. It's a melee attack with an accuracy base 85, a crit modifier of plus six, and this is where it gets interesting, plus 25% damage if the target HP is below 66%. So that's our first introduction to the sort of execute style mechanic of this class. Plus 25% damage versus bleeding, so there's some bleed synergy, and 45% damage versus mark. So very strong when synergized with mark, with bleeding, and if enemies are low health. Annihilated. So next in the kit then is a very standard marking ability called Death Sentence. Can be used in any position, can target any position. Ranged attack with accuracy base 100. It does no damage, it marks a target, and it debuffs that target for plus 6% crits received. So now we are brought to the first of its stun abilities called Incarcerate. It can only be used in position two or three, and it only targets the back two enemies. It's a ranged attack, accuracy base 85, minus 90% damage modifier and minus 9% crit modifier. It is not really meant to do damage, but it has some pretty incredible utility as it stuns an enemy and pulls them forward too. Now, if we just compare this real quickly to Flashbang, the range stun of the Bounty Hunter, this is actually fairly similar. The difference being that Flashbang is a shuffle single and stun, and it has more range. You can use this in two and back and target two and back. So Incarcerate is very similar, just with slightly less range. <sighs> 
So the next ability in its kit then is its second stun ability called Sap. It's a ranged attack used in position two or three. It targets the frontline enemies this time. Has an accuracy base 85, damage modifier minus 66%, crit modifier minus 1%, 100% chance to stun at level one, and debuffs the target for minus two speed. So uh, if we contrast this then to say uppercut, Again, kind of similar, except for that uppercut comes with a little bit more accuracy and a knockback too. So Sap doesn't have any shuffle with it, but it does have that debuff speed, which is kind of nice, just to allow you to kind of really slow something down so you can stun it and then guarantee that you can attack it while it is stunned next turn. So the next and final stun ability of the Wraith is Chain Gang, usable in two or three, a ranged attack that targets both enemies in two and three, accuracy base 85, and again, damage modifier minus 90 and crit modifier minus nine, with a 100% stun chance at level one. So that brings us then to our first bleed-oriented ability, which is Guillotine. It's a melee attack used in position 2 or 3, attacks enemies in position 2 or 3, has an accuracy base 85, damage modifier of minus 50%, crit modifier high at plus 7%, 100% chance to bleed an enemy for 3 over 3, and this is where it gets interesting. It will always crit if the target is below 25% HP, so another sort of execute mechanic here and plus 66% bleed amount when applied to stunned enemies, as well as 66% bleed amount when applied versus marked enemies. So just to be clear here, if you're using this ability on a stunned and marked enemy, according to Marvin, you'll get a plus 132% bonus to bleed amount. A death. Inches. And finally, the second bleed and last ability in the Wraith's kit is Hook and Slice. A ranged attack, usable in position 2 or 3, can target any enemy in any position. Accuracy base 85, minus 66% damage modifier, plus 7% crit modifier, 100% bleed base chance 3 over 3, as well as Shuffle Single. So we get a really flexible hit anywhere, bleed anywhere, as well as shuffle out of position. Let's just do a quick recap here and talk about how you would kit this to play with groups and just some extra things to think about. And that starts with Reap here. Now, Reap is an interesting sort of bread and butter attack for this class. I think that it is so powerful, it feels kind of mandatory to me. I don't think it's necessarily mandatory. You could certainly, you know, bring Mark Synergy to a group, bring Stun Synergy, you know, throw some bleeds out, and that's fine. You don't have to play with Reap. But to me, Reap is kind of comparable to Collect Bounty of the Bounty Hunter. You get that damage versus Mark, you know, you're gonna hit things super hard. The major differences here being that Collect Bounty can be used in position three, and it has a 90% damage versus Marked and that extra versus Human. So this, you know, leaving you in position one or two, and you only get 45% damage versus Marked, but you get those other synergies with Bleeding or Low Health. I think the real efficacy of Reap is gonna be later game, when you're up against boss fights, when you're able to synergize with bleeds on those bosses or, you know, high health pool enemies that are sort of uh, higher tier and maybe, you know, in the champion gameplay. And the significance then is that if you're going to be playing with Reap, you're stuck in position one or two and all of these other abilities are really functioning in two or three and that really pins you in position two. And speaking of the stuns, let's just make some last minute comparisons here because stuns are powerful in Darkest Dungeon, especially a double stun. And you know, the double stun of Chain Gang is really feeling a lot more like a sort of a mid-group, you know, version of a Hellion's Yop, or even kind of a little bit like the Plague Doctor's Gas. But of course, the stun meta has changed since the Color of Madness patch. And so the other thing about this class is that it really is capitalizing in certain ways against stunned and marked targets. And it really feels to me like if you're not able to p play this in position two, then this is more of a crowd control and bleed oriented class than it is 
sort of a collect bounty bounty hunter. Now, in terms of the camping abilities for the Wraith, we have four unique camping abilities, and you'll see that these are also comparable to that of the Bounty Hunter, with a nice little twist here, which is that a couple of them are really purposed to be in low torch light, which we'll check out here in a second. But that begins with Heartless. Time cost one, very, very affordable. Time cost one, self only, minus 25% stress damage received for the next four battles. At the cost of minus 25 virtue chance, for the next four battles. So minus 25% virtue chance effectively means you cannot virtue, right? Because characters typically get a 75% chance to have an affliction and that 25% chance to go virtue. So the good news about Heartless though is that it is really cost effective and you can just herbs off that minus 25% virtue chance. This also a nice setup if you wanna take this class into Torchless where you know stress is obviously more punishing. So then next is Silent. Silent is time cost two, also really affordable. Self only, plus 15 accuracy if the torch is below 26 for four battles, and eight crit if torch below 26 for four battles. So we see the first here of the sort of hitting on the shadowy assassin theme. So if we just think about Silent and we compare that then to this is how we do it. Again, time cost two, accuracy and crit here. This is just a little bit more accuracy uh, and again, this being at low torch. So next is Headhunter. Headhunter plus 15% damage versus human for time cost two. So now we have even more of an homage to the bounty hunter here. It makes sense to be sort of a shadowy assassin and to hunt heads. Of course, we have guillotine as part of this theme also. Uh, but that is just inherent in the bounty hunter's abilities. 15% damage versus human. So kind of a nice touch and also really affordable. And then last but not least is Drifter. Time cost two, self only, plus 30% scouting chance if torch below 26. So as long as you have very low torch light, you're gonna benefit from some really nice scouting chance. Scouting very powerful in Darkest Dungeon. And if we compare that to Scout Ahead, this obviously a little more expensive for a little less scouting, but this being slightly more affordable, a little more scouting, but with no torch. Now, in terms of trinketing the Wraith, it should be pretty obvious that damage is key. This is a damage and crowd control, sort of mark-oriented, bleed-oriented character. So, you know, anything that you're going to take that has, that deals a lot of damage is a good way to go. Dismas's head is, is comes to mind, the Ancestor's Pen. Just keep in mind that, you know, you have kind of a mix of melee with Reap, and then pretty much everything else here, with the exception of Guillotine, is ranged. So there's a mix of melee and ranged stuff. And actually what might be most interesting is also to take a look at the Color of Madness uh, trinket here, which is Memorial Guise. The Wraith only crystalline on attack hit buff self 2% damage, on attack hit buff self 1 accuracy, but at the cost of debuff self minus max HP. So the more you're doing damage with this class, the more you're ramping its accuracy and damage and making it more deadly, but also uh, the weaker it becomes in terms of its health pool, which is kind of cool. So that's the theme, I think. If you're going to be trinketing this class, you know, definitely look out for its custom trinkets, but don't be afraid to just go straight into speed and damage, damage and accuracy, crit, etc. That's going to do it for this short breakdown of Marvin Seo's brand new Wraith class. I would say across the board, this feels like a really solid class and far more straightforward and less complicated than any of his prior modded classes. There are no, you know, custom enemies with this, no nighttime ambushes, no mini bosses. And uh, so for the most part, it does feel like this was sort of intended to be an homage to the bounty hunter, but we get the added bleed and execute and stun synergies with this one, as well as kind of a neat backstory, which involves that master student dichotomy, a story about love and betrayal, which is pretty neat. Good on you, Marvin. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more mod overviews and everything else Darkest Dungeon. And let me know in the comments section what you think about this class. And of course, I'll make sure to include the link to download this class just below the video from Steam, as well as links to all of its extras, including its instantaneous town event, if you'd like to play it right away. And lastly, make sure to join us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash element5 as we continue our modded-only Blood Moon run Checking out the new Sunward Isles dungeon, we'll obviously be playing a bunch of the Wraith and much, much more. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.